But it's not overnight success. I have to persevere for almost 10 months. Uh, because in, if you can do something well, in one, two years time, you will actually change your entire life. He is one of the most recognizable and one of the most relatable finance YouTubers in Singapore. He's recently left his job, now going to YouTube full-time, so I have some details on it in a while for you. And his channel has blown past 40,000 subscribers already. So Kelvin, great to see you. Hey, thanks for the invitation. <laughs> yes, great yes. to see you. You know, everybody knows about your, your investing style, your, your investment knowledge already. So today we'll be trying to hear a bit more on your personality, your, your story in this journey. I think that is very valuable. So, so <laughs> I'm really curious to find out, you know, uh, you on a more personal basis. You know, imagine mm. we are all in secondary school again. We are good friends. Uh, we all the Thai fun together. What, who's, who's, who's Kelvin? Who's Kelvin in secondary school? Actually, I'm a very quiet person. Like if you see anyone, right, you won't really notice me because I'm, I'm just the guy in the corner. <laughs> so, so my YouTube personality... Uh, it's actually I'm, I'm forcing myself to be more mm. vocal, to be more comfortable in front of the camera. Mm. So yeah, in school days, to be frank, I don't really have much friends <laughs> in school. What was because your I, CCA I'm, in school? CCA, uh, I joined this uh, Taekwondo, but it's mainly to get the points, uh, not, not because <laughs> I'm very interested in it or anything. <laughs> but Taekwondo yeah, so is, a, is, a, is a sport right, whereby it's competitive. I don't know, you have to master some things. I thought it would be like library. Too boring for me. La. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to marking for exams, they were, what kind of personality do you have? Like, you had a... oh, so, so right at the start, I, didn't, I wasn't too interested in studying. Hmm. But uh, there was one year where I, accidentally, where I accidentally got the first in the class. Hmm. So right after that, I become interested in studying. And uh, as things goes by, right, people will ask me to um, explain stuff to them. So I think that's where I got my uh, interest in teaching people stuff. Mm. Because I realized that the more I teach, the more I can learn. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think it helped towards this whole YouTube thing. Lah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, because what we teach on YouTube impacts a lot of people. And very often yeah. we need to teach from the bottom of heart. Right? If you are teaching for the sake of revenue, then it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to sustain. Yeah, true, true. Then how, how do you get to computing route that was a strength that you always had no 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 I don't have <laughs> you see I, I'm from Malaysia so in Malaysia right there's totally no computing route at all it's just um, either science stream or accounting stream oh. so computing I chose it is because uh, I like to play computer games and because if I'm in front of the computer I don't have to talk to anyone so, <laughs> so it's, computing is a very natural route to me yeah, so I went to uni to study computing, um, graduated around 2011 and uh, mm. have been a programmer until now. Is it the one which you just left, which we'll touch on in a while? Because you have, oh. a, you have a new video. You yeah, kind of moved on from your job. Kind of thing. We will touch on it in a while. But was it the same uh, company that you joined at the start? Oh, no, this company was, I joined around two years ago. So mm. I joined a few more companies before that. Uh, some web development company, some games company. Hmm. Uh, this is just a new startup company. La. I want to, to lead on to the question on people underestimate how, how, how hard it takes to get to your level of accomplishment. No, they misunderstand because you, you dress simple, you sound friendly. They think it's, <laughs> they, they, they think it's easy. But before YouTube, what uh, have you tried before? Success or no success? Uh, as a programmer, right, that's one very special benefit that I have means that I, ha I can create programs or apps anytime hmm. I want. Like, for example, if you are an engineer, car engineer, you can't just go and create a car. But for programmers, as long as you have a laptop, you can create anything you want. So over these past 10 years, I've tried many different projects. Uh, all of them failed. <laughs> uh, but Gaming projects. Up, which means you try to create a game. Uh, games, uh, apps. Uh, but I did put them up all on my GitHub. Uh, um, I put it just open source uh, if it's already failed projects. My latest one was YouTube la, after 10 years because I wanted to share uh, financial knowledge with mm. people. So <laughs> I turned towards YouTube and all of a sudden, yeah, I got sort of success. La. But it's not overnight success. Uh, I have to persevere for almost 10 months before I, I even see anything. The first video you did was poor in terms of reception. Is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. La. <laughs> I don't have the skills or editing skills. I don't know how to talk to the camera. 
Okay. So I learned from, I actually watched a lot of your videos. I learned from you guys la, <laughs> how to talk. Like, what, what, I also, I also model after, you know, uh, the leading ones in US. So, so we all learn from uh, each other. Yeah, so in terms of modeling, while, uh, who, who do you model most in the starting phase, especially? Oh, you can say I sort of plagiarize because I have to start from somewhere. I don't know what's the style. So I start learn or plagiarize from Graham Stephan. Mm. Uh, his way of, because he's, he's able to, his way of talking is very casual and it's very simple. So new investors will know how to understand those kind of um, investing concepts. Lah. Yes. So yeah, I modeled from him. <laughs> then after a while, uh, I think around six to seven months, I start mm. to find my own niche. Lah. That's when you start to see my personality uh, coming out. Definitely. Because, you know, uh, we all only see the success. Right now, each video is doing well. They don't really see the journey. At the start, my own journey also, the first few edits, three. Topic, also boring. <laughs> it takes like so long to produce like a minute video. It's like, wow. At the start, it took me around 12 hours, 12 to 13 hours per video. Mm. Uh, right now, it's slightly shorter, maybe 10 to 11 hours <laughs> per video. I guess uh, now you, you, is, mm. you spend a lot of time on the research portion, right? If you do a review, for example, on a platform, yeah, you have to half dive of the time in, is right? basically research already. Correct, correct. I realize yeah. you are you're very good with researching on the platform, understanding the UX and stuff. I, I kind of like to delve more into company books, but <laughs> each and every style you have to do a lot of research. I guess it's the same. Mm, it's about four to six hours. Like half of it is research, basically. Uh, but it's it's beneficial like, because I want to uh find out about the platform mm. myself. For example, uh, recently Binance was banned, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> so I have to fi- start finding all the other alternatives. So I just research and I uh, present what I found to, to people. Then when it comes to success, right? Then the other side of things is always setbacks. Are there moments whereby you feel that you've sacrificed too much or you stayed up too late at night to work at oh, things? All the time. All the, success. <laughs> <laughs> all the time, all the time. Uh, because last year I was doing YouTube part-time. Mm. Uh, and at the same year, my kid came out. Uh, end of the year, la. I I was balancing between work, uh, YouTube, my kid, my health, mm. and my wife. And on top of that, I couldn't leverage on any help because all my parents, all my relatives were in Malaysia, mm. So basically, me and my wife have to solo the kid, la. How do you find the interview so far? If you've benefited, gotten value from this interview, smash a like, smash a subscribe, and leave any questions you have for me and Kelvin. We'll try to answer them as best as we can. So I don't hold you back already. Let me dive back into the interview itself. But in terms of, you know, sleepless nights, uh, you know, we're on social media. I think this part is also important for anybody that is blowing big in their own space of social media. It can be Instagram or TikTok also. There's always a lot of negative comments, haters. How, how do you feel about it? Actually, luckily, my channel has very few haters. Like maybe one in 100 or one in mm. 500. But it's uh, always that one that sticks out, correct? <laughs> 99 yeah, yeah, they say yeah. hey Kevin you're the best then one that disagree they is like oh. if they disagree like, like you are stupid this kind of thing I, I normally just ignore la. Um, if they have a valid point then they will take in their feedback la, and improve on it <laughs> yeah but overall it didn't affect me too much um, uh, it just reminds me to be more careful about what I say because I have I realized that at 40,000 subscribers I have quite a big influence Yes. <laughs> so I can't talk any anyhow talk about stuff. Otherwise, I will offend people unintentionally or misguide them. But also, you know, at when when the channel is big, there's gonna be some that some videos that perform well, some videos that don't perform well. Would hmm. poor performing videos cause you sleepless nights? Right now, I'm I'm releasing three videos a week. So every two days, I'm like throwing in a new video to try out my hmm. to reset the luck, uh, sort of. Mm. So even if it does badly, uh, I do learn from it. Um, the people who watch it do learn from it. So it's not, I, I don't feel it's a total waste. I know eventually this is a long journey and this is part of the stepping stone. Uh. I, I think this is very valuable for anyone that is thinking of starting the journey, correct? Because mm. there's always ups and downs. Yeah. Some do very well, then after that, some don't do well, then we kind of self-doubt. So yeah, I think eventually it's, it's a up, up that, journey. La. Correct. So the yeah. journey is always how you, you stand back up, learn from the those that don't do mm. too well, correct? And that mm. mindset can apply to any project, anything that mm. anyone's trying to start as a side hustle. You basically have to just hold the, <laughs> just hold the, at least, at least for YouTube, I realized the time frame is around one year. 
mm. uh, if you can okay. post one to two, at least two videos, right? At, at the end of, of, of the first year, you'll most likely see some results. Then regarding the hoarder portion, today you release a new video that your boss was hoddling for very long, the company. <laughs> then eventually now, I think he folded, right? Well, what's the story? In any case, anyone who wants to check out, I'll leave the links below to that new video. Around two years ago, my boss, he, he, he's considered an investor, like a rich investor. <laughs> so he wanted to start a gaming company. He went through a recruiter and the recruiter found me. So I would join as the first employee sort of. So I helped to find, uh, to create a team and lead the team. The COVID thing happened. <laughs> Actually, it affected quite a bit of um, in terms of revenue and stuff. La. Planning to create a game to sell to clients, but the clients, in the end, they, they went bankrupt. <laughs> so in the end, nobody bought our games and stuff. So after so two You years, were the first employee and you kind of helped set up the company. Because they got me thinking, to... hey, why didn't you choose to leave? When, when he wasn't doing too well. So maybe that explains correct because you were one of the key founding members. Yeah, yeah. I can't Difficult just leave like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I wanted to keep making it work until at least mm. next year. If, if, you, if it works out well, then I would have left the job to do YouTube full-time. Mm. But uh, luckily or unluckily, this company closed shop. <laughs> so it led to right now. So I'm doing YouTube now. Yeah, it can be a blessing in disguise. Uh. Maybe you accelerate your growth. You have more time to think spend so. now and, and really build. Maybe you can even build a gaming channel. I don't know. The thing about gaming is it's too saturated already. If you okay. talk about gaming, there's uh, like uh, a few millions of uh, gamers out there, streamers out there. And all of them are quite established. Like, mm. and, and on top of that, I'm not even a girl. So <laughs> I'm losing a whole bunch of viewers already. But again, we started the mindset, you know, when we started, we didn't imagine we'll get to this stage, correct? Starting a new project always has that lingering self-doubt. I think if I ever start a channel, it's about, it's more about helping others. Mm. Uh, games, I, I see game as a form of entertainment. I don't plan to make it to, <laughs> into earning money. Otherwise, uh... that leads to the next uh, question that I have. Like, now at this stage, now sounds like you're going to do it full-time. How to blow the channel even bigger? How to get to the first video with a 1 million view count. What are your thoughts? Right now, uh, my channel is very focused on Singapore target audience. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a very big problem for me. Mm. Uh, because like what, Singapore only has 2-3 million <laughs> viewers, uh, people in it. So if I ever want to reach a million views, I have to start targeting international audience like and I don't really know how because uh, it's, it's actually my personality to, make, to talk about Singapore jokes. Mm. So if I start talking in a different way, I, I don't really know how, how people will react. I guess Understood. I have to try, um, try to find out. La. I'll just pause the interview here. Uh, inviting anyone to leave questions, comments. Kevin or myself will pick it up. Especially if you are thinking of starting your channel yourself. If you have something that we can help, maybe we'll also comment. There also. So any last words, not Kevin? Last words on what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? What are your thoughts on, you know, job wise? Now going to do full time YouTube. I think I'm in a very lucky position to be doing something that I like, lah. I'm very sure that most of the people there are doing stuff that they don't like. <laughs> yeah. If if that is your life, right? I I think I feel it's a very wasted life. So um, I mean, just step out of your comfort zone, take some mm. risks. Uh, start watching TV every night. Uh, because in, if you can do something well uh, in one two years time you will actually change your entire life and yes. uh, be much happier la. Mm. yeah so, so that's my advice <laughs> Ken thank you Kelvin in future we have another debate on investments and stuff but today really I, I yeah, heard sure. a lot on your personality I got a chance to buy you coffee as a friend buy me Milo la. I don't drink coffee <laughs> <laughs> hope you have learned something from this interview to grow a YouTube channel it takes a lot of commitment and Kelvin is one that has displayed that for a consistent period of time. I guess the attitude can be applied to many projects and endeavors that you may have down your years. So hopefully, you can take something away from today's session and you can apply it to better your own life. So with that, I sign off. Smash on subscribe, smash on like. I'll see you in a future video. Take care and goodbye.